In this video, I want to share some thoughts on why I think privacy is important, okay? especially as we are designing for uh, you know, these decentralized applications. I think it's really important that we think through uh, the implications of privacy, okay? because there's a lot of forces in this world that are eroding privacy. And if you, if you watch, you know, like the interview, that famous interview with Mark Zuckerberg where he takes off the hoodie because he's sweating when he's asking about privacy, um, my impression with that was that he just didn't really, that there was no thought about privacy. Uh, he kind of gave a non-answer, okay? And so as you see what has happened, um, there's kind of some unintended consequences to not having privacy, okay? Um, I think that privacy is extremely important and we should really focus on um, doing this right from the beginning instead of having it be an afterthought. Okay, but in order to get it right from the beginning, we first have to say, okay, well, what is privacy and what are the uh, intentions of it and all that stuff, okay? And so that's what I wanna talk about in this video. So to me, privacy is the ability to control who could observe you, who could observe your information, and who could observe the communication that you broadcast, okay? So it's the ability to control that, right? So, in other words, if I'm having a private conversation in this room, uh, I would know, if all the cameras and stuff were turned off, that the only people that would be able to hear my sound waves would be the people in this room. Okay? In other words, I'm controlling my voice to be in this room, right? So it's controlling who can observe that communication. In the digital realm, if I'm sending a text message and if it's encrypted, I'm controlling who can observe that text message. So privacy is the ability to have control. Okay, in, in some instances, like with this YouTube video where I'm putting it out to the world, uh, I'm giving up control, right? I'm making it and I'm gonna let it go, but, but it's my choice. Okay, so privacy doesn't mean isolation or living in a cave in the desert, but it means having the ability to control what the information is going to do, okay? or, or you know, what is your intention with this? And a lot of times, and the, re the real problem is with these current products and the current generation of products, is that they are dressed up as one thing and they're really something else, okay? In other words, people think, oh, it's this cool app, but really what the app is designed to do is suck up all sorts of information about you, right? So that you really have no control of, okay? You don't know where that information is being used, how it's being used, uh, and all this stuff. And so you're getting a free product, but you're giving up all sorts of stuff, and you have no control, really, of what consequence that's going to have later in your life, because things aren't straightforward, okay? It, it's not like, oh, you know, we're going to use this information for this, this, and this. It's, you know, post this thing to get a bunch of likes, and you're just thinking about the likes. Okay, you're not thinking about all the other stuff. Or if you're browsing a website and stuff, you're not thinking about the consequences of what that will have because you don't know how the data is being used. Okay? So as we build these decentralized applications, I think it's really important that we consider this stuff. Okay? And I don't have all the answers. I'm, and I'm sure in many ways the blockchain could possibly make this problem worse uh, if done improperly. So I think we really should think about this before we design this stuff, okay, and really think it through. Okay, Nikola Tesla would imagine engines, he would hallucinate engines, it's like AR headsets, but he would do it biologically. And he would design the engine and he would let it run for, he'd put it off to the side and he'd let it run for a month, and then he'd come back and check later and see what the wearing out parts for. And then only once he was totally satisfied with his engine would he build it, okay? And in his autobiography, you could read it, he was talking about Edison, who would go and he'd try things and fail and try things and fail and try things and fail and try things and fail. And he says, what a waste, right? It's crude and it's not a good form of invention. They both work, but Edison's way causes all sorts of waste, whereas his way, he thought it through and then he built the product, okay? So I want us to be more like Tesla in this case, because with the decentralized web, it, you can't really go back, okay? There's no deleting things. And so we really should think about this uh, before we do it. So 
what are some reasons why people would want privacy? Okay. Because a lot of times people say, oh, I'm, I'm not a criminal, I have nothing to hide, I don't care about privacy. Okay, and to me that's like, okay, that's crazy because obviously you do have things to hide, your credit card number, your passwords. Um, you know, if, if you have nothing to hide, do you mind if we just publish that in the newspaper tomorrow? And I think people would say, oh, actually I do have something to hide, right? And there's a million and one little things that you do, closing the curtains or shutting the door to the bathroom or, you know, closing the door so you can have a private conversation in your car or whatever, okay, there's a million and one things that you do every single day to protect your privacy. It's like at an instinctual level we do this. And so to think that now we're on the digital realm uh, and we're building all these applications, it doesn't matter, is crazy, okay? We need to carry this over into the technology. And if we don't, it's gonna have some serious consequences to humanity, in my opinion. Okay, and so that's what I wanna share why, okay? So what are some reasons why normal, law-abiding citizens who are not criminals would want to have privacy? The first reason is what I call practice and experimentation. So when I was younger, I wanted to learn how to play the guitar. And my room was at the top of the stairs, okay? and so. All of our bedrooms are upstairs, and if my parents wanted to go to their bedroom, uh, they'd walk right by my room. If my brother wanted to go to his, he'd walk right by my room. And I remember being extremely self-conscious because I would be playing and they could hear through the door when they'd walk past my room. And I was thinking about this later, and I was wondering, why was I so concerned about privacy? You know, I'd practice when they weren't home. If I heard the garage door open, I'd stop playing, uh, and this kind of stuff. And the reason why I wanted privacy in that instance is because I knew I was gonna suck. You don't just pick up the guitar and start playing fluently, right? There's a process where you are gonna make mistakes, it's gonna sound terrible, uh, and then after enough trying and failing and trying and failing, you'll finally become fluent. And you know, they could have good intentions, they may hear you and say, Kev, look, you know, you kinda suck, we don't want you to embarrass yourself on a stage, maybe just give it up and focus on other things that you're good at. Okay, but I knew, and they never said that, I'm just saying this is what my thought process was, but I knew that it was a process, okay, and that through enough mistakes I would eventually become good. Okay, there's that quote by Jim Rohn, and it's uh, stand guard at the door of your mind, right? Meaning if you're starting a business or if you're doing something, you have to cancel out the naysayers. Right? You have to be careful about what other beliefs people will try and put on you that might crush your own belief. So Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, says, if you are an entrepreneur, you have to have the skill set of being able to be misunderstood. Because by definition, people will not understand you because you're doing something that's new. Okay? And Having all these people in your face constantly wanting you to explain things or wanting you to uh, you know, listen to their negative opinion about what you're doing, it can be distracting. Okay? And, but if we have privacy, if we have the ability to control uh, who could observe us, and we have the ability to control who could look at our uh, private notes and stuff like this, if we have the ability to control who receives our communications, and so we're not always talking in public, if we have that ability, then we can actually give body to our idea, we can develop it without all of these opinions of people chiming in, okay? And then once, like with the guitar, once you become fluent, then you can reveal it to the world and you can listen to their judgments, okay? But you, it's like a little baby in the beginning and you want to protect it, okay? You need to keep it, it's like if you had a, had a child, you don't just put a seven-year-old out in the world. Well, I don't know. I don't, I've never had a child, so I don't know what the ages are, but let's say a three-year-old. You don't just leave them out on the street alone, right? You protect them. And then once they're of a certain age, you let them out of the house by themselves. Okay, so practice and experimentation, right? You need to have a safe space. And this, what is the real, you know, mechanics of how this works? Whoops. So, if you look at a bell curve of the population, right, you see this in statistics a lot, where 
uh, they want to divide up a population and you know give certain categories to it. And so with products, they divide it into these classes. So right here you have the innovators. And these are the people that actually create new products. And then you have the early adopters. And these are the person, people that take a risk on uh, maybe a product, maybe it's not very popular, but it's this new thing, kind of controversial, but hey, I'll, I'll give it a shot because I like new things. Okay, and then you have the early adopters that they only do things once it's pretty established and it's a safe thing to do. Okay, they need to see other people doing it first. Then you have the, oh sorry, this is the early majority. Okay, and then you have the late majority. And these are the people that, you know, they, they kind of get dragged in, uh, into it. They don't really want to do it, but since everybody else is doing it, they kind of have to do it. Okay, I'll do it. And then you have the laggards, which are people like, uh, you know, or they're still using their flip phone uh, because they just don't like smartphones, even though the majority of the population now has a smartphone, right? So the people that drive progress are the innovators. Right? These are the people that actually create new things, uh, new companies and new products, things that you know, improve and uh, you know, drive our world forward. And these people, by definition, okay, by definition, will always be misunderstood by all these people. The only people that really understand the innovators are these people. Okay? But all of these people, if you were to take Nikola Tesla and his hallucinating engines in his imagination and you were to put him in a mob of the nor of you know the majority of the population they would think he's crazy okay they'd be like what is this guy doing uh, we need to put him in a mental hospital because he's out of control right they would not understand what is going on here by definition remember Jeff Bezos said if you are an entrepreneur you have to have the skill set to be misunderstood okay this is a mechanical thing it has always existed. Uh, back in the beginning, well, not in the beginning of time, uh, but back in the day, that person that discovered that actually, guys, the Earth isn't the center of the universe, but rather we revolve around the sun. Okay, people used to think everything revolved around us. Uh, he was like tar and feathered, like, not really, but like, you know, people are like, this is blasphemy. How could somebody be so stupid? Uh, clearly, everything revolves around us, right? But he was right. We revolved around the sun, okay? But the majority of people, even though he was right, they didn't understand it, okay? But eventually what happens is these crazy people, people catch up to them, and they move on to something else, okay? So they move over here now, and then the majority goes back to where the innovators used to be. So we need to protect these people. Okay, in order to have a prosperous society. Because if you have a 1984 example, or the brave new world, we have such a strong state that controls every, you know, they have strong surveillance, they control all the thoughts of people, then people will self-censor. Okay, they, they, won't, they won't go out here, but they'll revert back to the mean because they don't want to stand out, right? And that costs huge, okay, with a company. Okay, for example, when Steve Jobs returned to Apple, okay, he was on the verge of bankruptcy, he turned it around to become the most valuable company uh, on planet Earth. Okay? What was the first ad campaign that he ran? Think different. Okay? I'm not saying that's the only reason why it succeeded. There's many reasons, but this is a huge component of the thing. He celebrated these people with that ad campaign. Here's to the crazy ones, the ones that see things different. They're not fond of rules, they're not fond of the status quo, et cetera, et cetera, right? Watch it again, it's fantastic. But he celebrated these people, had images of Einstein and uh, all these crazy people that did not fit in. But he celebrated these people and he instilled within that culture that it is okay to be weird, that it is not only okay, but it is celebrated and it is good, okay? Because it is good because these are the people that drive the world forward, okay? And then he also, protected that he had a you know culture of extreme privacy where nobody could peer into people during their creative process and look at what you have today right 
So you have an extremely successful company that originally when he returned was on the verge of bankruptcy. Okay, we've all been in a company or whatever, a work environment where if you introduce some new idea, everybody shoots it down. Okay, and you actually get in trouble in most cases. Okay, but how awesome would it be if you were in a company that actually rewarded you for bringing forth new ideas? Okay, well that must be what it was like there. Of course, they'd be critical of ideas. I've never I worked at the Apple store, but I never worked at the Apple uh, headquarters. But I would imagine that they celebrate uh, new ideas. Okay, so that's the first reason. Okay, you need to have privacy in order to protect these people that drive the world forward. It's like in the X-Men, where you have all these crazy people that have all these advanced, you know, telekinesis and things coming out of their fingers, claws and stuff. Well, they're abnormal and they need to go to the special school in order to be protected. Okay, they need to have privacy. So the second reason why privacy is extremely important is for social harmony. So it wasn't until I deleted my Facebook. Uh, so I grew up with Facebook, right? So. You know, I would always, uh, everybody in high school started using it, I started using it, uh, and I just kind of grew up with it, right? And it wasn't until my, uh, I forget exactly, sometime in my 20s, I just said, like, I've had it with this, and I deleted it. Okay, it was kind of a big move for me, but I decided that I wanted to experience what life was like without it. And after a period of adjustment, you know, like a few months, Finally, this background hum of anxiety that I'd been carrying all the time just fell away. Okay? And what I realized was, is that I was broadcasting my whole life to people. Okay? Like, oh, nice to meet you, what's your Facebook? Oh, I'll check it out. And boom, here's everything about me, my timeline, whatever, going all the way back to high school. Um, and not everybody understands my background. Okay? And if they look at pictures, they'll, they might you know, they'll have an opinion about it, whatever. That's not how normal communication works. Okay, when you make friendships in real life, you don't just give everything away. What you talk about is like the weather, the local environment, and you slowly find commonalities first, and then once you've established, you know, a bond, then you may discuss some, you know, controversial things. Then you may discuss things that might be a little bit edgy. But if you are just coming in hot, like people do on Facebook, where you don't have a bond, but you just meet somebody, add them on Facebook, and then you just start talking about the most intimate feelings, you're going to have conflict because people will not understand your perspective. They won't even have a bond with you, right? So what I realized is that when you have privacy and when you have the ability to control the information that is being revealed about you, then you can establish a friendship with just about anybody. But when you come on hot and just reveal all the information about yourself, there's going to be discord. Okay, maybe you grew up on a, you know, a fruit farm and you just love fruit and you, you know, grow the highest quality fruit, whatever, and you are in conversation with somebody and you're talking what you do, what do you do, and one of the first things they say is, oh, I hate fruit. Well, you're going to, you know, hide the fact that you grew up on a fruit farm and you love fruit and you'll talk about other subjects just so you can have a bond, right? But if you come in hot and say, oh, blah, 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 you, there's gonna be conflict. It's like putting a Mentos and a Coke together. There's fighting, right? So social harmony, right? It is very important. I remember one time uh, I was on a, because here's the thing, and the decentralized application thing, uh, one of the big things, oh, everybody will have their account balance where we could all see it, right? And there's ways around it by having different accounts and smaller wallets and things like this. But in my opinion, this needs to be solved, right? We need to be able to keep our account balance somewhat private because there's a story that goes in, into the subject. So I was traveling one time and when I travel, I just love to wander, right? I usually have a vague idea of what I want to do, but then I just wander. And I was uh, in this neighborhood and I, I wanted to hop on a bus, right? It was, it was a downtown area, uh, but I wanted to just, just go. I had the impulse to get on the bus. I'm like, okay, I'll get on the bus. Get on the bus and go to pay. And it was a dollar, 
pull out my wallet and I only have $20 bills, okay? And so I look at the guy, I'm like, I only have 20. So he's like, I don't have change. So I just instinctively turn back to the bus. Does anybody have change for a 20? Okay, and as soon as I did that, like, you know, oops, I just made a grave mistake because half of the bus was staring at me pissed off and the other half was looking at me like, dude, what are you doing? Are you retarded? And I realized that I was going to like a somewhat uh, perhaps poor neighborhood and me waving a $20 bill asking for change didn't go over well, okay? It wasn't my intention to start a conflict, but it didn't go over well. And I look back at the guy, I'm like, I don't have change for a 20. He's like, just get on. I get on the bus and literally, okay, a person, he had bloodshot eyes. He was yelling at me. He was about an inch away from my face. You know, what the hell? Just like, just in my face until I got off on the next stop and went back the other way, right? So there are certain things that create conflict. And if you do not have the ability to control information and keep some things private, okay, if I just got on and had my right change and got on, there wouldn't be conflict. But if you do this thing, so if we all have our AR glasses where everybody's account balance is above their head and these kind of ideas, that could create serious conflict. Okay, that, that's not a safe thing to do, in my opinion. So having privacy is extremely important. The third reason why privacy is important is for what I call self-sovereignty and protection. So back to the X-Men. In X-Men Apocalypse, in one of the final scenes, uh, Magneto is talking to Charles Xavier, okay? And Charles Xavier's the guy in the wheelchair who's psychic, he can read everybody's mind and this sort of thing. And Charles is talking to Magneto, he's like, can I convince you to stay? And Magneto says, Charles, you're psychic, you can convince me to do anything, right? So that's something to think about. If somebody had all these data points about you, okay, and they, they knew all of the most intimate details of your life, okay, could you have the capacity to think a new thought? Okay, or would it be like 1984 and all these dystopian novels where there's this you know, powerful state that is controlling everything that you do? Okay, so could you have self-sovereignty if everybody had information about you? So in the United States, we have this thing called the Second Amendment. Okay, and the Second Amendment says that you can carry guns as a citizen. Okay, now most people would say, whoa, that's kind of crazy. That's dangerous. Uh, everybody can just have a gun. Okay, but what the designers of, the con of you know, this amendment said is, look, if the state is the only person with the guns, okay, if the government is the only person with them, and the government became corrupt, there would be no recourse for the citizens. The citizens would have no way to protect themselves against the corrupt government. And so even though it may have some unintended consequences, it is important that the uh, citizens are able to protect themselves against the state. Okay? And in a similar way, we really need to consider with privacy, uh, if only a select few have all the information about people, that is really potentially dangerous. Okay? And so either we black everybody out and we do not give these people that power, or there needs to be a two-way type of transparency. Okay, and I think the cat is already out of the bag, and so I don't know the solutions. Okay, but what we do know, or what I do believe, is that we need to, for our own protection, have some sort of counterbalance going on. Okay, there needs to be a two-way transparency, or it needs to be like what Apple is attempting to do, where they just encrypt everything and they black everybody out. So that is my thoughts on privacy. Okay, for our own protection, we really need to have uh, privacy. Um, if, ever, if somebody knew where your every location is, that's kind of creepy, okay? especially if it's somebody that you don't know. And what if you have a differing opinion about what they're doing? Okay? There's that one interview with Taylor Swift where she wrote that letter to Apple um, saying that, you know, why aren't you paying the Apple Music subscribers? And she's like, she, she became super paranoid. Like, what if they're listening to me at the webcams? Are they spied on me? All this kind of stuff. And they probably weren't. And it's probably just paranoia, but it's a valid paranoia, right? What if somebody actually had that control where they could uh, listen in 
on everything that you're doing. That's really scary and that's dangerous. And so for uh, our personal protection, we need to consider this stuff, okay? And as we have shown, it's better for society. And I'm open to debate this, okay? I'm sure there's many different arguments about this. But in my opinion, if you wanna have growth of a society, if you wanna have innovation, if you wanna have progress, then you need to give people their privacy. In the same way that when I was learning to play guitar, uh, I needed to have my space. Okay, now I do understand that things can get so private and so, uh, you know, anonymous that you can do crazy things and there could be problems with that too. So perhaps there's a balance we have to strike. Uh, but we should really think about this because if we go too far in one direction, there will be unintended consequences. Okay, so that is my perspective. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one. Thank you for watching.